the first video of this two-part mini-series on how to record and mix acoustic guitars and vocals was old footage filmed in my old studio in Europe. We've seen different stereo micing techniques and setups for the acoustic guitar and different mic positioning for the vocals. We pick up from there. In this video, we break down the mix of the song. Let's get to it. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixbest TV, hope you're having a great day. Before we start, check the info box down below for my mixing courses on Pro Mix Academy and special discounts and offers on plugins. And there couldn't be a better video for you to check out how to become a Mixbest TV member by clicking the join button down here, because for this video and the previous one, I will provide for members only the Pro Tools sessions from the first video, so the recording session, so you can compare the different uh, stereo micing techniques on the guitar, how they sound different, the files with the different mic positions for the lead vocals, so you will have both and of course what we are looking at today the Pro Tools mixing session with all the files all the plugins all my settings everything so you can try to mix the song yourself the files and the Pro Tools sessions will be available only to members and I will link them after this video is released on the YouTube community page to members only so if you want to become a Mixbest TV member click the join button see all the perks let's get to the video so first of all this was an impromptu session we didn't plan or record for the channel or for a tutorial that day but the guys were at my studio and we thought about doing this they are amazing artists so it was no problem to get a good sounding track right away so let's play the mix first thing my first my last my everything and the answer to all my dream you must Okay, so first of all, before start driving, you need to know where you want to go. So before even start the processing or anything, my thought process was, where do I want to go with this mix? What kind of sound do I want? So I've seen these guys live several times and that's the vibe they have. That's where they really shine. So this was a live recording because we're, they were playing together, even if in different rooms, but I wanted to keep that feeling. I wanted to keep that live performance vibe and we were in a studio the vocals were recorded in my uh, mixing room which is very dead and even the live room the guitar was was pretty dead so i went for as you heard from the mix a very ambient -y kind of mix okay so a live club kind of vibe uh, this could be changed in one simple move and you will see from the mix and turn this into a more intimate, more smoky club, or maybe even just a small room with few friends around, just by turning down the effect return. You will see it from the mix, especially if you have the session, all the reverbs, the two reverbs that we have, I kept this very simple, they go to the effects bus output. So if I want a drier mix, the only thing I have to do is to turn down the global effect return. Oh my Okay, this is simple routing, we'll break down the mix so you will see that, but it's a very useful way, especially in simple mixes like this, to gauge how much ambient you want, especially on an acoustic piece like that. Simple, easy to set up, and you have with one fader the control over the wetness of your mix. Uh, we have just three tracks, like I said, I wanted to keep it simple, both the recording and the mix. And because it was an improvised section and I didn't really record that much in that studio, I had to record the guitar on a crappy mixer that I had. Uh, but this is also a real life example because 
probably many of you will have the same uh, limitation. But because of that, the, the guitar tracks turned out to be noisy, okay? So first of all, we have, I think I used the uh, spaced pair. So let me solo the guitar before processing, before doing anything. This is one mic. Actually, let me bypass everything that is in here. And this is the other mic. These are raw together. But as you can see from the name of the file, these are denoised. And to denoise them, I used Isotope RX7, which is amazing for stuff like this. And I can show you and let you hear the pre-denoising file. So this is especially this mic, the bottom one. Let me turn the volume up a lot so it will go into the recorder. Okay, and this was after the denoising. Okay, and I'm gonna switch those and let you hear, especially this passage here, when the sound goes down and the noise to signal ratio, it changes a lot. You will hear a big difference. In noise, okay, especially here. The sound doesn't change that much, but the noise when the sustain of the note uh, lowers. A lot cleaner. And when there's so much noise uh, and you start processing, that really gets in the way of the vocal. There's something that is not clean and we can perceive it even if we don't realize that it's noise. And as you can hear, the sound doesn't really change that much. Let me show you the settings that I used on Isotope RX7 to clean up that noise. So as you can see, this is Isotope RX7 interface. I used the spectral denoise to denoise both tracks. The, the bottom one needed more denoising. What I did is I let the denoiser learn this part here, the beginning when there's only noise and then apply the processing. You can see best D, the quality artifact control between musical noise and gating and threshold and reduction. So these are the settings that I use on RX7 and then we have the clean track here. Now before denoising it though, um, I can play this and play it for you, although I should add all the processing because it gets more obvious once you add all this. Okay, you can hear it here. There's some clicks, okay? Is the plectrum or some other thing, maybe a t-shirt, a button, um, hitting the body of the guitar. So it, it was a lot more before. This doesn't bother me, but before, uh, another processing that I did before starting the mix uh, altogether is again isotope, but this time the the click part, the sensitivity was left default. So the algorithm single banded click widening was about 1.5. I use the settings here, but it's a case by case. They will change given a different track. But this one. You can hear it removes clicks and crackles and stuff. So it helped me removing this noise that I had something hitting the body. So after that, the mix actually started. I bust the two guitars left and right to this yellow aux tracks acoustic guitar out where there is the bulk of the processing. This bus has a send to the effects, which is the global reverb. And then we have another reverb for the vocals. Let's hear the guitars before and after all the processing, both single tracks and the guitar bus. This is without. Okay, let's take a look at what I have. SSL channel for the both of them doing absolutely nothing, no filters, no anything. And then Pro-Q3, 
the first one is again doing nothing but the second one you can see a little bit of boost 2 db a 1k and removing this part in dynamic mode though it's not a static move so around 100 hertz it helps contain you know that low note then we have the guitar output again here you can see i have the filters so as we said many times when you have a multi mic source meaning one source of sound in this case the acoustic guitar with multiple mics you don't filter them individually on the single channel okay kick in and kick out we we've seen that so many times in the channel but you bust them together because you worked to get the face right when you position the mic so you want to keep that face relationship correct if you start high passing single channels that will screw up the face relationship between the two so you bust them to one aux in this case is a, is a stereo aux because they are two mono pan left or right and here you use the filters for the first time okay 40 hertz and 12. then i use smart eq Let me bypass the rest here and let you hear it's subtle but smart eq is very good for acoustic material for me uh is a is an intelligent equalizer it analyzes uh the material and then gives you a curve which is a weighted curve it's not an actual equalizer with belts and filters completely different i have a review on this one it's a really good plugin uh, i used it again to contain the low end the low mids and add a little bit of brightness it sounds very natural You will have the sessions for members and then the bulk of the EQ with this Pro Q3 on the whole guitar bus. This is the offending fre frequency. That is dynamically a little bit too wild. Then I had this band, which I bypassed. I used this one for, it seems a lot, but it's not, it's 1.7 dB of boost in shelf 2K. Uh, this is a 5 dB notch. And then I use again, more filtering because I needed to contain this low end a little more. And it's a steep filter. Usually I don't use those, but this was sounding pretty good in, in this case. Then the limiter, just to catch those you know super tall peaks can actually go here okay you can see it works like 2 3 db just on those uh, tall tall peaks and used in this way is pretty natural i use the l1 uh, no need to anything fancy now the api 2500 is a great plugin in general good for acoustic guitars i love it Here to note is the old mode, the mad thrust and the hard knee. These are probably my standard settings, but it's important to look at the uh, left and right link is at independent. So we keep the stereo image very wide. Ratio is very low, attack is low at 10. I want the peak to pass. I'm not trying to control the peaks. I use the limiter for it, okay? Release is fast because the gain reduction is so low. You can see like one dB. That I just add a little oomph with this one. Subtle, but it's a little more dense, a little more muscular with this one. And uh, we cut a lot of low end, we filter a lot, we needed a little, a little body. The next one, the Pro C2. As you can see, it doesn't react to the guitar. It's not triggered by the guitar. But if you take a look here, box side chain, it's triggered by the vocal. So with this one, basically when the vocal sings, 
when she sings, the guitar signal gets ducked, gets reduced by this compressor. Why? Because this way I can keep the volume of the guitar high and make it glue to the, to the vocals without the guitar going on top of the vocals. And it's not that much. Is 1 dB and you can see the attack and release settings and the range is 1.5 dB. That's the maximum range that I'm allowing the compressor to compress no matter how high she sings. And that's enough to make these two elements, this is a simple mix, so guitar and vocals, to basically automate themselves without me doing automation. Transparent um, compressor for that and then plugin that I really like, I uh, reviewed um, some time ago and I've been using it since then is the Newfangle Audio Saturate and I use this one in dual mono you can see left and right are unlinked and the left the drive is a 2 dB and the right the drive is a 3 dB why because this track here was a little higher in volume and basically it needed a different kind of saturation I'm using this to again control the peaks without using the limiter and enhancing the perceived loudness of the guitar the perceived actually transient of the guitar while containing the nominal level of it. He also adds a little bit of crispiness to it, is automatically compensated. Last one is a simple pull tech EQ. Just a little bit of body, just a little bit of boost at 12K uh, with a sharp bandwidth, okay? So let's try with and without just this aux bus, just this processing here. Okay, it's very subtle, although we have a lot of uh, processors in there, it's very subtle. Uh, everything is doing very little. We can take a look at the FX for the guitar. So the effects send is pre-fader and it goes to this. I'm gonna turn the volume up just so you can hear it well. SSL is not doing anything, then we have a Valhalla room. Large room setting, EQ'd, and then I have the TC Electronic uh, 12110, which is a spatial expander. I have it here, I don't know if I can pull it out. Yeah, I can. So th there's this one, to make this reverb really, really wide and add a little bit of modulation. This is an amazing plugin. Let me show you without it. This is subtle. This is a subtle uh, use of the spatial expander, but I didn't want to make it like crazy because it's still an acoustic recording. The uh, EQ is, uh, the reverb, sorry, is EQ'd a little bit. You can see the, the same offending frequencies that we tackle in the guitar itself. Uh, we remove them in the reverb as well, and then it's compressed. But it contains it, it's, it's there, it's not doing this that much because I left the guitar pretty dynamic. I didn't want the reverb to be as dynamic as that. And that's it. And together they sound like this. Okay. And that's it for the acoustic guitar. Let's see the lead vocal. But this is it for this video. So I hope you liked it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. If you have any question, leave it in the comment down below. And remember, Mixbus TV members will have all three 
Pro Tools sessions with the raw files. I will link them as all the members only content in the YouTube community page. Uh, those posts are visible only to members, of course. If you want to become one, click the join button, take a look at what it's all about. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.